church. We're going to have our coffee time here at church because we're trying to get the bugs worked out. It's my Fender mug there. Fender? Yeah. We're uh, working out some bugs and getting ready for Sunday. Uh, the number one complaint we heard from last week is the audio. So we think we may have that uh, better. It's not going to be perfect, um, but hopefully better. And we've got more equipment coming in. We'll continue to make improvements. I'd like to talk to you briefly just about the Word of God and the Bible's relevance and everything that we're, we're going through right now. And <clears throat> there's three really key passages that where the Scripture talks to us about the relevance of Scripture itself. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 2 Timothy 3, 16, and 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. And these are really hallmark verses that talk to us about the significance of God's word and what it means to us. Uh, if you're like most of us, we're constantly checking in on the news. I try not to watch too much of it, but enough of it to know what's going on. Um, tonight at midnight, uh, Corsicana joins other cities and pretty much being a uh, shelter situation, only essential services and all that. I think Rockwall kicked in yesterday and and uh, people have been pretty much following suit to what the, the larger cities are doing and, and pretty much everybody's following in line. So things are changing. They're changing regularly and daily and we constantly are looking at uh, the death toll and, and what's going on all over the world and it's just a, an amazing time. And, and so we watch these things and we listen and we learn, but we know that we need a, a deeper wisdom. We know that we need help beyond uh, just ourselves. And so we turn to God's word and we look at what it says. And Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, and this is very powerful, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, pierced, uh, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so 2 Timothy 3.16, uh, written by Paul to Timothy, it says, all scripture is breathed out by God. Think about that for a second. The word in the King James and NASB is inspired, but it's actually God breathed, theonoustos, profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. That is deeply personal. That is deeply personal. When I studied um, crime scene stuff as a, as a rookie cop when we were in the academy, they taught us about uh, DNA. And they said that in your breath are actually particulates of blood. And what that means is, is that even in your breath is your very DNA. And right now the danger uh, of this COVID virus. They're saying stay away from people's breath. Stay away from, uh, you know, transmissions from the mouth and everything else because you're literally taking on what that other person is putting out. And so that's very personal and that's very cogent and poignant right now that when we receive the word of God, we are literally taking into ourselves the very essence of himself. It's very personal. It's a personal transmission. It's a powerful thing. And Jesus said, if you are in me and my word is in you, ask and it will be given to you. And if you have the Holy Spirit of God inside you and you're in God's word, you're, you're going to have yes answers to more of your prayers, frankly, because your mind and heart is going to begin to be aligned to his. And you're going to know, you're going to think God's thoughts after him. And it's just a whole different ball game. It's just a whole different game. Second Peter 1, 20 and 21, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from, from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever pronounced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's a, a great uh, apologist right now. His name is Vody Bauckham. And I encourage you to go to YouTube and look for Vody Bauckham, why? I believe the Bible. He's currently a dean of students at a seminary in uh, Zambia, but he's been a pastor in Texas. He studied at two Southern Baptist seminaries as well as Oxford and is an amazing intellect. And that video would, would do you well. He's preached the same message many times. Why I believe the Bible. Just an amazing, amazing apologist. You'd be very blessed by that. But I want to talk to you about reading the Bible intelligently during this time. I, uh, I've got a lot of friends. Uh, Joanne used to be this way. I used to be this way. Something called Bible roulette. Joanne's giving me looks. 
It's her birthday. Say happy birthday, Julian. Julian, say happy. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, she's going to laugh at me anymore. All right. Uh, read the Bible carefully. It's a power tool. The Bible's a power tool. And uh, maybe some of you like me and some people in the past, you know, you're like, Lord, just show me something. You open the book. And sometimes if you open the book, if you open it toward the middle, you're either going to get Psalms and you're going to be encouraged. But you might get Isaiah or Jeremiah, in which case you personalize that. You're not going to be happy, right? That's not happy stuff. So how do we read the Bible intelligently? How do we use it appropriately? Um, a book written over, you know, 1,400 years by 35 plus authors with different genres, some narrative, some history, some poetry, uh, all these different things that are in here. And so there's three things when we look at the Bible. There's observation, interpretation, application. What does it say? What does it mean? And what does it mean to me? And so um, if you're like me and you've tried to read through the Bible in a year, you've tried to have daily devotions with your kids, you try to do that and it lasts 30 minutes, your kids are going to, you know, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard. So let me give you three little suggestions that may make it easier. One, break it down into smaller pieces. If your kids don't want to sit still for, you know, 30-minute Bible study, make it a 10-minute Bible study. If you're having trouble reading a chapter a day even with your kids, break it down to paragraphs. You know, whatever it is, just break it down to something that they can manage and then you can increase over time and work your way up. Another thing is to have good resources at your side. This is a Ryrie study Bible, and there's tons of study Bibles out there, but Ryrie deals with theology. You don't want a study Bible that's just devotion, that can just make comments on the Bible, just like you can make the same comments when you read it. You want a Bible that will help you to understand difficult passages. The Ryrie study Bible is one of the best. Another is the old Criswell study Bible. It's been in several different forms. This is the last form it was in. It is out of print, but if you search around, you can find one. And you probably know somebody from First Baptist Dallas, if you're any of my friends, that has extras of them laying around. This is a great resource. MacArthur Study Grab Bible is great. Uh, David Jeremiah Study Bible is great. There's a lot of good ones out there. But it's good to have something in your hand that will help you with theological questions when they come up. Your kids are going to ask you, and you're, you're going to ask yourself. Uh, you're gonna, I, I listen to the Bible now every year, and every year I listen. I hear something I hadn't heard before, even though I've been through it countless times. The Bible is relevant. It's alive. It is literally of God's essence. It's a gift. And believe me, we need it. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we pray for rescue. Our people need to be rescued. Our world needs to be rescued. You came here. You sent your son to rescue us. Lord, we need rescue now. I pray that this time will not be wasted, but people will turn their hearts toward you, their eyes toward you, and they would seek you out that you would strengthen the members of our church, that you would strengthen the members of the church at large, that you would draw us closer together and show us what to do in these difficult days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Fear not, praise, pray, encourage one another. We'll see you next time.